Welcome to this tutorial on publishing the website you created with Excite Pro. This handy guide will walk you step by step through the process of sharing your incredible new site with the world. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to secure a web domain name and hosting account, and how to enter your information in Excite Pro so that it knows where to upload your site. Additionally, we'll talk about storing all your domain and web hosting info in the Extra Publishing Details dialog. I'll show you how easy it is to actually publish your site. And finally, we'll check out the Excite Pro Knowledge Base for tips on getting set up with your specific hosting provider. To start off, what do we mean by publishing? Well, when creating a project in Excite Pro, all the information you create rests in a project folder on your hard drive. In order to make that information accessible on the web, you need to publish or upload that information to a web server. Excite Pro makes this a quick and easy task that can be performed with just a couple clicks of the mouse. When you've decided that your site is ripe for publishing, you can publish every page on your site, or at least every page marked Publish This Page on the Info tab, with a single click of the Publish button. But before we get to that, let's make sure that Excite Pro has all the needed information to put our site in the right place. To check on this, click the Publishing Details tab. Now I know this looks a little complicated, but after watching this video it will all start to make complete sense, and as long as you can get the right info into the right box, you can forget about it and you won't have to touch it again. Let's start with the hosting details. Simply enter the domain of your site, including the www part. If you haven't yet registered for a domain name, there are a number of companies that can help you find and register an appropriate domain, including our own ExciteReg.com. These services can tell you whether the desired domain is available or taken. And this one appears to be available. Yay! And we'll also give you pricing options depending on how long you want to have the domain registered initially as all registrations are for a finite period of time. Once that's done, you'll need to park your domain with a web hosting provider. These are the folks who provide the actual server space for your web files. You may wish to check with your local internet service provider since you might have been given a small amount of free web space when signing up for internet access. Most hosting providers offer various plans based on how much speed, space, and uptime you need. And some, like Excite Reg, offer one-stop shopping for both domain registration and web hosting. Now, back to Excite Pro. Once you have your domain name, please enter it, along with the name of the home directory. Since you'll probably be putting your site into the top-level directory of your domain, nine times out of ten you'll leave this field blank. Home directories are really only for packing multiple sites into a single domain. To take a peek, just click the View Live Website button and you'll see the live website as it currently exists on the server. If you've never published before, you'll probably see a blank page like this one, or an under construction or a future site of message. Uh, most hosting providers have some sort of dummy file that they put there. Next, you'll enter your FTP details. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol, but you don't need to know the ins and outs of FTP any more than you need to know how a car works in order to drive one. The info for the FTP server field is usually just FTP plus the domain name. For the username and password, just use the information you got from your hosting provider. You might want to look over the emails you received when you first signed up for hosting. Give them a call if you can't find what you need. Remember, these are case sensitive. FTP directory is the directory on the FTP server where all your files will actually reside, and you will often leave this field blank, but depending on how the hosting company has their equipment set up, you may need to enter something such as slash public underscore HTML. Take a look at the welcome email they sent you, or visit the hosting company's help pages if you are unsure. As for the passive mode checkbox, this is a method of file transfer that is always initiated by the FTP client rather than the server, and is generally regarded as more secure. Anyway, just leave it checked, and only uncheck it if your connection test doesn't work and you've eliminated the possibility of a typo in any of the other fields. Speaking of which, 
Once you've got all the information entered into all the fields, you're going to want to test out your connection prior to attempting to publish. We came up with this handy Test FTP Connection button. It will attempt to establish a connection using the information you provided. If everything works as it should, you'll get a successfully connected to congratulatory message, and you're basically all set. If not, you might want to try one of the following. Make sure that you have no typos in your server name, username, or password fields. Check with your hosting provider to ensure that you don't have to specify a particular directory in the FTP directory field. If you find that leaving the FTP directory blank doesn't work properly, you might want to try slash public underscore HTML, slash htdocs, slash and whatever the name of your domain is, or slash and whatever your username is. Finally, uncheck user passive mode as some servers don't support it, though this is rare. Okay, before we actually publish our site, here's another dialog I want you to have a look at. Click the Extra Publishing Details button. Wow, look at all the fields. But don't panic, you don't have to fill out anything in this dialog and publishing will still work. This dialog is for storing all kinds of handy information about your domain name registration, web hosting details, and other info into one central repository, so you'll always have it at the ready when needed. Now, the home page file name will almost certainly be index.html, so I'd leave it alone unless you know different. You also have fields for noting the domain registration and web hosting companies. You've got a URL field for the hosting company and their email address, as well as your site's web-based control panel if your hosting company provided you one. Clicking on the button will take you right to the corresponding URL. If you have a control panel, enter the username and password for them here, which may or may not be the same as your FTP username and password. And of course, document how much money you're paying. Next, you have fields for making note of your name server addresses, which is useful when parking your domain, and mail server addresses which is helpful for setting up the domain's email accounts in your favorite email program. Of course, almost all this info can be found in the welcome emails you got from your hosting provider. Finally, there's a large notes field for keeping track of any and all related information. And remember that you don't need to enter any information into the extra publishing details section and your site will still work fine, but it is a great place to store lots of essential information and as such it is well worth taking the time to log everything just in case you need it. Now that we've got all our info entered, it's time to publish the site. Just click the Publish button, or choose Publish from the Tools menu. When it asks if you're sure, say yes, of course. You'll be presented with a special dialog that logs the entire publication process. If your site is extensive and you've never published before, this could take a while. It'll take significantly less time on subsequent publishings, since only those pages that have since changed will be uploaded. And since we have 110 files, this could really take a while, so why don't we speed things up just a bit? There, that's better. Okay, we're all done. You can check out any trouble spots on the Error tab, though this should be a pretty rare occurrence. When finished, just click OK, and now you can preview your very own live website. Of course, all web hosts have different systems. Fortunately, the Excite Pro Knowledge Base, in addition to helping you with all aspects of Excite Pro, is an excellent repository of information on getting set up with different hosting providers. Just type in the name of your hosting company, and you can find out exactly how to connect using Excite Pro. If your hosting provider isn't listed, just open a support ticket and we'll do all we can to get you set up. To recap, we've examined getting a domain and web hosting account and using the Publishing Details tab to provide upload information as well as store all related info in one handy spot. If you haven't already done so, feel free to check out the other tutorials in this series.